Welcome to the last module of Comprehension. This week we're going to work on summarizing, retelling, and synthesizing and ways of doing it and why we should teach it. What the text features and structures are for both narrative and informational text and the next step in close reading. We're going to continue with the IES practice guide recommendations of teaching comprehension strategies. The next one we're going to look at is teaching students to identify and use the text or organizational structures to comprehend, learn, and remember content. These are the typical elements of structure for a narrative text. These are what you want to make sure your students understand and can tie together. They should look for these elements in all narrative text and be alert to the various placements that the author may use to introduce these. As students learn these different structures, they will ultimately be able to better predict and comprehend what the text says. They should look for structures as a guidepost for the piece as a whole. Informational text can be difficult because each paragraph may have a different structure. We need to make sure we've read the piece and identified the various structures so we can point these out to our students and help them notice them in informational and narrative text as well. This information can help students as they begin to write in different genres and forms as well. Ultimately, the reading students do can guide their writing in that same genre if the markers and structures are mirrored. Here's the first organizational structure, it's description or listing. In this, it's usually both in narrative and in informational, it just gives information. I'll give you a moment to read through the details. The next structure is sequence or chronological. Sequence is first, second, third. Chronological is by date. Third structure, compare and contrast. The, the structures I'm telling you go up in difficulty. Compare and contrast is what's in common and what is different and we need to make sure they know what compare is separate from contrast so that they can put them together at the end. These are the structures mainly found in structured tests. Fourth structure is cause and effect. Why something happens. In this one there are a lot of different structures. It could be effect to cause, cause to effect, cause to effect to a cause, um, different things you can look for. Problem solution. You rarely get this structure um, in books unless it's why do um, wells swim type thing where they usually give a problem solution. You probably will never have it in an essay test that students are given, but it is an organizational structure. If you look at these, can you identify the organizational structure? Goosebumps make me shiver. shiver. First I get cold, then I shake all over. Goosebumps make me shiver. I get little bumps on my skin. They look like sesame seeds. Some people get goosebumps from fear. Others get goosebumps when they are touched emotionally. Goosebumps make me shiver. When the temperature drops below 45 degrees, my skin crinkles into goosebumps. Last one, goosebumps make me shiver, but they disappear as soon as I cover up with a jacket or sweater. Now you can see a little bit why it's so difficult to teach these structures. Even as adults, we're not used to looking for the structure of it. The next thing in comprehension 
is close reading. I'm going to go just a little bit more into it. There's a lot you can get on an online class if you want to know more about close reading to writing. One, it's not a new practice. It's something we've all been doing. It's just never been stre stressed like it has today. Texts are need to be chosen carefully. We need to make sure that we guide them through it. It does take multiple days and does take a lot of scaffolding. Creating a close read, you're going to use a simple text. You're going to reread the text. You're going to make sure and teach students to read with a pencil, annotating text. It will have text-dependent questions where they have to use the text to answer the question. Has limited front-loading because you want kids to discover stuff within the text. They're usually short passages. They don't have to be standalone. It can be poetry. It could be anything. Make sure, though, that they have a clear purpose, that they imp it should improve your fluency and comprehension, and there are three steps to it. Like um, Shanahan says, it's initially, what does the text say? Second read is, how does the text work? Third read is, what does the text mean? The first way to help students with close reading is to help students learn how to annotate. They need to read with a pencil. They need to mark up the text. I know that means more paper, but it also means teaching comprehension to a deeper level. You'll be searching for close detail on the first one, and that's usually important ideas, um, facts, figures, those kinds of things. That's the first level. Level two is inferring a lot more figurative language, shades of meaning, um, how it's organized, the structures, those types of things. And level three, is mainly the author's purpose. Why did they write it? What did the author think? What did the author mean? Those kinds of things. And it links to everything. It makes connections. And it's really good for sixth grade because it really helps to teach opinion, art, and argument. Learning targets need to be there. Learning how to summarize, synthesize the text features. IES number one is teach students how to read comprehension strategies. And it matches anchor standard two, determining the central themes of a text and analyzing their development, summarize the key details, and ideas. We need to teach kids how to summarize or be able to retell the story and retelling it means in a order of events. Summarizing is just an overview, retelling is telling it in order. This will be included in the module. It's how to teach students to summarize. Again, this will be there. The thing I like about this is it kind of goes through a complete set of steps that students need to start from to get to the end. Again, here, this will be provided in the module, giving you the steps. Here's an additional page of it. Notice here that they listed as eight different steps. If you really want students to be able to summarize, make sure and begin with step one, even if you have fifth and sixth graders, to make sure they totally understand the steps. 
Anita Archer lists some things. Um, write down topics, list important ideas, cross out unnecessary information. When you're doing this, please make sure and teach annotating very completely because students have a habit of underlining everything when they're doing summarization. This is a video that you'll be watching in the module and it lists the good practices that are with summarizing and retelling. Here are some frames that she gives you. The nice part about these frames is that if you use them, students will in the future use them as well. But we're setting them up for success because we've given them a format. We've given them a way of writing it correctly. In my class, we always would even start with the lower grade frame so that they make sure they can build from there. That way everyone can be successful. These are both for narrative. This is an informational one. Again, you only give them as much as your grade level can handle. This is another informational one. You'll see a lot more information needs to be come from the student in this one. Academic language that you would use to discuss it and write with. Here's some more. Academic language is what these students will need to use in the future when they're in college, when they're in the workforce. They won't be able to say, uh-uh, huh? I don't understand. We want students to take ownership of their reading, monitoring themselves while they're reading and self-correcting when they need to. This skill is taught in context and reinforced while you hear students reading. Sounding it out, predicting, rereading, things like it lists on the chart. Synthesizing takes the process of summarizing one step further. Instead of just restating the important points from the text, synthesizing involves combining ideas and allowing an evolving understanding of text. Into the book defines synthesizing as creating original insights, perspectives, and understandings by reflecting on texts and emerging elements from text and existing schema. For students, the site provides the simpler definition, which is put pieces together to see them in a new way. It is the most difficult to teach, but it does follow summarizing. Take a look at the ideas listed on the website for other lessons that you could use. You'll see here by the stems that they have to take what they've learned, they summarize what was in the text, and tell them what they've learned, what they understand. It also is, if they have to take it to writing with one of these, is also a great depth of knowledge. Have great time this week. When this is completed, your credit will be given to Amanda Hansen, who will file it, file it on your cactus. Have a good luck.